What is Miami Heat culture? What if I told you the same thing that allows the Heat to get more out of their talent is the same thing that holds them back? Life is full of give and take, double-edged swords. And in sports and basketball, it's no different. Let's start with Pat Riley. Who is Pat Riley? Listen to Shaq. Well, I've seen Pat Riley almost drunk drown himself. <laughs> he, yeah, he, yeah, he came in one day and, you know, he was trying to teach us about mind control. And he was like, you guys don't have the right mindset. You know, he pulled a piece of paper. He said, the world record holder of breath underwater, let's just say it's five minutes. That man put his head in an ice cold bucket for about eight minutes. Oh, come on. Get out. Yeah. Yes, he did. Eight minutes, eight minutes straight. You ask him. You, so he's got the world record now. He's got the unofficial world record now. He's got the unofficial world record. Eight minutes straight. He did it. Yeah, okay. He regular old David Blaine, huh? Oh, yeah, he did God. it. Yeah. So forget it, Shaq. I saw it. Just to give you an idea of the type of mindset and man that Pat Riley is. Now, he took over the Miami Heat in 1995, but the toughness his teams play with had long been a staple back to his Lakers and Nick days. As far as the LeBron era goes, I think that was a special point in time where I think the Heat and Pat had to make compromises in their philosophies in order to pull off that trio. And I think that's also ultimately probably why LeBron left the heat culture. I feel like that only made Riley double down on what he believes in though. And that's toughness matters as much as talent. And there is no flipping the switch. You must go hard all the time, not just for yourself, but also as a way to wage psychological warfare on your opponents. Now, in order to do this, you probably have heard one of their philosophies is you gotta be in shape. You gotta be light. And for that reason, the heat have a weight limit that their players must reach, or more accurately, a body index, meaning each player has to be at a certain body fat percentage in order to play. Now, I remember first hearing about this with Antoine Walker. It felt like every season he was there, he was benched for the beginning of the season because he came in to camp out of shape, and it was unacceptable for the heat standards. I feel like Shaq got a pass though, right? Was Shaq ever at a low body fat percentage? Not in Miami. Anyway, you ever hear a boxer say, I peaked at the wrong time. Sports science suggests that you can only really stay in peak shape for a certain amount of time. Fighters, Olympians, all sorts of athletes have mastered how to slowly rev their body up to be in peak shape for the time of their event. Now, we know basketball season is much more of a marathon than a sprint. I think LeBron is the perfect example of a player who has learned to peak at the right time. I mean, I'm guilty of it. Every year in November and December, we say, oh man, he's lost a step. But then come playoff time, we realize he once again had been pacing himself to peak at the right time. All right, now back to the heat culture. That all gas, no breaks mentality. Well, it kind of makes it impossible for the heat players to pace themselves throughout the season. You may say, well, what do they get out of that? Why? Well, for one, you don't see them play down to their opponent. They're not going to lose because of effort. It also tends to maximize your player's talent. You see, they find out what you're made of quickly. Where other organizations, it may take them two, three years to figure out if a guy really has that work ethic. It weeds out the weak. And it simply breeds the toughness that Riley values so much. And it really doesn't matter the profession. I think we all tend to adjust to what's asked of us. So the Heat are like, well, we're just going to ask a lot of you all the time and you either get used to it or you're out of here. Now, what's the downside? Your strength is your weakness, right? The same reason this culture is able to maximize its talent is the same reason they don't peak at the right time and they tend to have so many injuries. The Miami Heat try to sprint through the regular season. By the time the playoffs are here, they've usually peaked, come down, and peaked again. Now, this isn't exclusive to the Heat. You often see it with young, thirsty teams trying to prove their contenders. They'll come out to start the season like gangbusters, not fully understanding, look, nothing is won in November or December. 
So you see where I'm going with this, right? The Heat are an organization where their biggest weakness is pacing themselves and staying healthy. All of a sudden, they get four months off just before the playoffs. Now they enter a bubble tournament that has become much more of a sprint than a marathon. You have a team ready to make a run at a title. Ironically, the team they just knocked out, the Milwaukee Bucks, you could probably make the argument the stoppage has hurt them the most, right? A team that was so dominant during the regular season, they were able to consciously pace themselves and anticipate being the freshest team headed into the playoffs. You take that advantage away, along with home court, well, I'm not surprised at what's happened. Look, obviously Giannis went down, but I feel like they were going to lose regardless. Now, Heat fans, don't get salty here. I I'm not hating. I want to give credit where credit is due. Look, this roster, it's a perfect mix of vets who still got it and youth that are just stepping into their prime. And you combine that with the Heat culture of toughness and swagger, and hell, they're right where they should be. I'm just simply pointing out, I think that the stoppage has helped the Miami Heat more than any other team that remains in this bubble. If you enjoyed this video, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. And I'm going to give you thought-provoking, smart, current NBA subjects. Let me know what y'all think. Are the Heat the favorite now? Toronto, Boston, pushing each other to the edge? Out West, are the Lakers and Clippers just going to cannibalize each other before the finals? Go ahead and take a look at some of my other content. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let me know what y'all think. Who is the current favorite? I'm out, y'all. I've been winning so long, it's like alchemy.